Hey guys, this is Austin John 22 coming to you today with another review, and today we are continuing our look at RID in waiting for my new set pieces to arrive so I can assemble my new review area and get going with the Combiner Wars stuff. And today we are taking a look at the Bruiser of the group alongside Grimlock, of course, uh, Transformers RID 2015 Warrior Class Strong Arm. And this is a Fembot. This is our first Fembot of the line, and I really, I really like the concept of her. She's, she's the, the tough one, and I think that's a nice change, rather than just making the Fembots stealthy and, you know, sharpshooters and good martial artists and whatnot. We finally got one whose main attribute is strength and resilience, and I like that a lot. Um, yeah, good looking, good looking robot as far as we can see here. But as we all know, we do not start these reviews in robot mode, so let's go ahead and get her transformed up through the magic of jump cuts. And here we have Strongarm in her vehicle mode, and in terms of length, she's about standard deluxe class size, but she's quite tall. I mean, here she is standing next to a deluxe, and she's about up to their knees, and that's, that's pretty good. I'm going to hold off showing any vehicle mode size comparisons of this guy, though, or this chick, I guess. Until we look at another R.I.D. figure down the line, because I want, I want to create a really stark contrast there, and I don't want to spoil anything. Which I don't, I don't think I will. This is just a gimmick I'm trying. So uh, bear with me. Um, yeah, she rolls great. She's got this nice white and blue decal or deco, I guess, with this the police lights up here. They're just painted on. I would have liked to have seen them molded in translucent plastic, but they are painted on, and the paint's not bad. There's a little bit of uh, bleeding over here. Uh, same two colors on the front for her headlights and her Autobot symbol. No paint on the rear of the vehicle. Uh, same kind of rugged looking off-roady uh, tires as Steeljaw, while I adjust both the figure and my camera, you can see the same kind of details there, and you can see hey look, there's a whole robot underneath there. Um, there's also another stage to the transformation uh, you are supposed to open that up. The only reason I can figure out why you would be able to do that is because it allows the weapon to be stored underneath. So yeah, there's that, I guess. Overall though, um, in case you hadn't picked it up already, Strong arm here is a oh she's a shell former. I mean if car robot sideburn is allowed to be called a shell former, this this figure is definitely a shell former as well. Uh, it's it's kind of mind blowing, but at the same time I don't really mind because the way things end up going with it. So let's go ahead and get her transformed up. So let's remove the weapon that I just now put there and just fold this chest piece back up. It at uh stays in position very well. You have to kind of force it a little more than I would like to. But anyway, uh, next we're going to come up here and just kind of loosen up these panels on either side and bring them up. Come on. There we go. Like so. Next, and it already did it. There, These uh, tabs let's see if I can get a better shot on these tabs here tab into slots there, but they don't do it very well. So this whole thing lifts up. We're just going to kind of just kind of leave it right there for now and uh, rotate this section around like so. Bring these bits uh, you can see it better on the side. Bring these bits around to make feet that have actual heels. Hallelujah! I'm so excited. You don't even know. Uh, anyway, getting over that. Come up here, and this, this part is kind of clever. I'm going to try to show this off. So let me get, get it in frame, first of all. We're going to take this whole section and just kind of bring it up like so. And then split it in half, as you can see there. And then uh, separate these sections, like, like so. And then you can see they're on these little like rectangular mounts. The whole thing, not, and not just the arms themselves, the whole thing rotates forward so that these pins, which were oriented up, are now oriented forward, as you can see. And that gives it shoulder uh, movement, and also allows you to kind of recording these up and give the shoulders some more definition. 
Now we can bring the arms down and we can take these front pieces and fold them up around the hand to make this arm bit thing and kind of already did it on this side. Uh, but yeah, and I think that's really clever. It's a really clever way to use what was just a panel sitting on the front of the car and actually incorporate it into the robot mode rather than just have it hang off somewhere. As you can see, that's clearly the truck's grill right there. But it, it, it doesn't look bad viewing it from any of the obvious angles. Uh, next, we're going to come to the back here. And in keeping with how these figures have pieces, they just rest places without actually uh, tabbing in anywhere. We just kind of bring this up and just, just sit it against the back. And you can kind of flare the doors out a little bit. Uh, but mostly just kind of pull them straight back. And that's the one thing I don't like about this figure. Those big side panels that they couldn't figure out what to do with except sit them on the back. And it annoys me. But otherwise, otherwise I think Strongarm here is actually a really nice figure. So, uh, so yeah, you can see the blue here. I don't know if I actually pointed it out. The blue is actually kind of flaked with little glittery metallic bits, and there is some detailing there, some molded detailing. You can see our Autobot symbol there. Um, she does have light piping. You can see clear optics. Nice silver in the face. And I like the yellow crest here. It's very cool, too. Uh, let's see what else is interesting. You can see kind of a belt-looking piece molded in there, but it's not painted. You can see the, the shins are painted white. So, um, I mean, not, not the most exciting looking figure of all time but definitely it's definitely got a dynamic look to it and let me tell you the fact that this thing has freaking heels is a godsend I was worried that none of these R.I.D. figures save Grimlock whose feet were like a major wide part of his body were going to be able to stand up and this is this is a pleasant surprise because you can actually pose her I mean this is a bad example because she's probably going to fall. Oh no, there we go. You can actually pose this figure. And that's just, it, it's remarkable to me. Uh, which it shouldn't be because all figures should be able to stand up and pose. It's why they're called action figures. Uh, but moving on from this, you can see she uh, rotates above the elbow, but this panel here kind of gets in the way. She does bend 90 degrees at the elbow and while limited by this big front panel and the back panel here, she does have, and you have to be careful or else this whole assembly will rotate, but she does have a full 360 degree rotation at the shoulder, and she does raise about yay far at the shoulder. Um, her, I'm not sure if her head is on a ball joint or a swivel. It looks like it's on a ball joint. You can see she can look up and down. Actually, she can look pretty far up and pretty far down and it does rotate a full 360 degrees very nice she does have the transformation relevant waist articulation she does rotate above the knees has a full range of hip articulation and bends better looks like well not quite about 90 degrees at the knees it looks like it's a little past 90 degrees but it's not really functionally any different. Overall, I mean, I, I really, I didn't dislike Bumblebee, and I didn't dislike, I'm still fiddling with her shoulders, leave it be, leave it be, AJ, leave it be, stop, stop succumbing to your OCD. Um, yeah, I, I didn't dislike Bumblebee, and I didn't dislike Grimlock, aside from its size, Th but this is probably the first figure out of the group that, aside from the kibbly bits on the back, which do irk me to a point, mostly because they take up extra room on the shelf, not even because they're all that noticeable, it's just they stick out the back and take up room on the shelf. Other than that, though, this is the first figure out of the line that I've really genuinely enjoyed and haven't had any kind of major issue with. She does come with this gun, which has, a, has an effect piece on the barrel, and sadly it it's just there, it doesn't remove. I could, I could cut it off, I guess. I just, I hate the, I hate effect pieces. Unless the figure is specifically designed to utilize them or something. And she can wield it, of course. It's got kind of this alien 
machine gun, machine gun vibe going for it. And uh, I mean, it sticks back kind of far, so it kind of gets in the way of this stuff. But overall, she can get some pretty decent poses out of it. I think looks ends up looking pretty good. Uh, eyes is pretty good as well. Um, let's get some guys in here. You can see, like Bumblebee, she is a bit taller than Steeljaw, but I mean. She's about the same height as Bumblebee, which is pretty nice. So, I mean, that's that's always pretty cool. I kind of would have expected her to be a little bit taller based on the character art we've seen of her, but honestly, I haven't been paying all that much attention to it, so that could be entirely inaccurate. I'm not even going to bother speculating. Overall, though, I mean, standard deluxe height, and, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not that, all that much more to say about this figure. It's It's a good figure. I really like it. So uh, let's get rid of these guys again. Uh, yeah, what it really comes down to is, do I recommend this figure? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, probably more so than any of the figures in this line so far, except maybe Grimlock. I think this figure is just really fun, really good. Uh, kind of plain in terms of paint, but still I think she is overall the best offering we've gotten so far from R.I.D. 2015. And yeah, so wholeheartedly recommend it. Go pick it up now. And that's really all there is to say about that. And as I said, next week we will be taking a look at the Combiner Wars figures. So, uh, you know, look forward to that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I certainly enjoyed making it. Please help me out, like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined. In the description down below you'll find links to all the other things I'm working on, as well as a link to my collection video, which still hasn't been updated, so... I don't know, check it out if you want. I don't really care. Either way, this has been Awesome John 22, and I will talk to you guys later.